Introduction to Audio. In this lesson, you should understand data transfer rates, the difference between data transfer and storage units of measurement. You should be able to calculate the amount of storage required for a project and also understand file formats. This lesson will require some basic math skills and a calculator. The rate at which data travels through a network is called throughput. It may also be termed bandwidth, and this is measured in bits. Bits and kilobits are designated by lowercase letters and measured on a per second basis. Hence, one kilobit per second would be denoted as one kbps. This is not to be confused with measuring data storage which is a slightly different scale, as we will see later in this lesson. Throughput is a decimal numbering system and increases in exponents of 10. This is very important to understand. The decimal system is what you use every day when you count. and The name is derived from the Latin word decim, which means 10. This makes sense since the system uses digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. These digits are what we call the symbols of the decimal system. The decimal system is a positional number system. It has positions for units, tens, hundreds, etc. And the position of each digit conveys the multiplier, a power of 10, to be used with that digit. As mentioned, the position of each digit conveys the multiplier power of 10 to be used with that digit. This is referred to as an exponent. Exponents on this system are the result of a process of repeatedly multiplying a number by itself. For example, 10 to the third power would be 10 times 10 times 10 or 1000. Exponents are denoted by stating the first number 10 the caret symbol, which is above the number 6 on your keyboard, and what the power is, 3, 4, 5. As you can see in the table, we have one bit, which is a lowercase b. There is no multiplier, so it equals 1. One kilobit, or kb, which is 10 to the third, or 1,000 bits. 1 megabit, capital M, lowercase b, which is 10 to the 6th, and that's 1 million bits, and so on. Measuring how data is stored is a slightly different process. When measuring storage, bits and bytes are calculated as exponents of 2 instead of 10. This is known as the binary number system. Binary numbers are just a, a different set of symbols, but all the same math applies. Bi is Latin for 2, hence exponents of 2. And the binary number set only has two symbols, 0 and 1. The counting table for binary is very simple indeed. Binary digits are sometimes called bits. Numbers consisting of 4 bits are known as nibbles, and numbers of 8 bits are known as bytes. And it's very important that you do not confuse the difference between the binary and the decimal system. In the table on this slide, you will see that one byte, represented by the capital B, is 2 to the third power, or 8 bits. 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. 1 kilobyte, uppercase KB, is 2 to the 10th power, or 1,024 bits. 1 megabyte, uppercase M, uppercase B, is 2 to the power of 20. And this is 1,048,576 bits, and so on. Now you'll notice the bits is different in our binary system than they are in the decimal system. The decimal system, since we increase by 10, they're even numbers, 1,000, 1 million, 1 trillion, and so on. In the binary, since it's a multiplier of 2, you'll notice they're not 
in increments of 10. Telephones were not designed for data transmission. They were designed for voice transmission. So to send a Word document, an audio file, a flash file, a web page through a phone line requires a special conversion process. This conversion process is performed by our computer by a device called a modem. The term modem is derived from the words modulator, demodulator, which describes the conversion process. One very important consideration when working with audio files or video or any sort of documents that will be transmitted over the internet is the speeds by which they are sent. Transmission speed is measured in bits per second. In our table we can see some transmission speeds. 14.4 kbps is 14,400 bits per second. A 28.8 kbps modem is 28,800 bits per second. And 56 kbps is 56,000 bits per second. And so on. These are generally the download speeds, not the upload speeds. So times can vary drastically. And there's a variety of factors that can change these numbers. If you have a 56k modem, you may not be able to receive files at that fa at that speed. You may only receive them at 288. This is due to latency, which is packet delay, line noise, and other factors. You can guesstimate the download time by taking the file size in kilobytes and multiplying it by 8. Remember there are 8 bits to a byte to see how many bits there are in the file and then dividing that number by the modem's kilobits per second rate. So for example, to transmit a 50 kilobyte file over a 14.4 kilobits per second modem, you'd multiply 50 by 8 to get 400. Then divide 400 by 14.4 kilobits per second to get approximately 28 seconds. This is one of the reasons we recommend limiting your file sizes to 50 kilobytes. Since 60% of the population is still on dial-up, and as you can see, on a 14.4 connection it takes 28 seconds. On 56K, it will be much faster under our 10 second load time target. In the table, we can see the amount of download time it takes to retrieve a 1 megabyte file on a 14.4 kilobytes per second modem. It would take 10 minutes and 40 seconds. Way too long to wait. And on 28.8, it's 5 minutes 20 seconds. 56K, 2 minutes 22 seconds. And hey, on broadband, just a handful of seconds. What is sound? All matter is made of molecules, and when energy strikes a molecule, it vibrates back and forth, producing a wave. Sound reaches our ears as waves of rapidly varying air pressure caused by vibrating objects, such as a guitar string. As the string moves in one direction, it pushes on nearby air molecules, causing them to move closer together, and this creates a smaller region of high pressure on one side of the string and low pressure on the opposite side and as the string moves in the opposite direction, the areas of high and low pressure reverse. How? And our ears convert these vibrations into electrical impulses that our brain interprets as sound. For a demonstration of this process, visit the BBC Science website. How fast an object vibrates is called frequency. As mentioned, how fast an object vibrates is called frequency. The vibrations, or frequency, are measured in hertz. One hertz is equal to one vibration or one cycle per second. One kilohertz is a thousand cycles per second. The human ear can only perceive sound from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The intensity of a sound is called the sound pressure level, SPL, and is measured in decibels, lowercase d, capital B. Decibels are a logarithmic scale that represent how much a sound level or audio signal varies from another signal or reference level. In other words, it is relative, it is not an absolute measurement. You might refer to a sound as being 10 decibels louder than another sound or 3 decibels softer. 
little piece of history, the term decibel means one-tenth of a bell, named after Alexander Graham Bell. A capital B in the symbol DB for decibel is capitalized because of Alexander Graham Bell. To convert an analog signal or sound wave to a digital format, the recording device will sample or evaluate the voltage of an electrical sound wave several thousand times every second. Sampling usually happens at equal, separated intervals. This interval is called the sampling interval, and the value of each sample is rounded to the nearest integer on a scale that varies according to the resolution of the signal. The integers are then converted to a binary number and recorded. The value of each sample is converted to binary numbers, and the sampling rate is how many times per second the voltage of the analog signal is measured. Harry Nyquist suggested that the highest reproducible frequency in a digital system is equal to or less than one-half of the sampling frequency. In real terms, for a digital system to reproduce the entire frequency range of human hearing, remember that's 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, then the system has to sample the incoming signal at two times the highest input frequency, or 40 kilohertz. This doubling is known as the sampling rate, or sampling frequency, as proposed by Harry Nyquist. Today we see this reflected in the distribution of audio CD-ROMs, which use a 44.1 kHz sample rate and a 16-bit resolution. Some other sampling rates are 32 kHz, 44.1, and 48 kHz. The higher the sampling rate, the more expensive the equipment becomes, and the more space required to store it. The sample rate is similar to the frame rate of video. It measures the number of frequencies into which audio is broken. Resolution, or bit depth, is the number of tones per second, like color depth in video. The bit depth is the resolution of the digital audio file, or the level of detail at which the sample data were recorded. For example, the bit depth of 16 means that the waveform amplitudes, or voltages, were recorded with 16-bit digital words, which gives over 65 thousand, that is 2 to the 16th power, possible values to be recorded. Remember, binary number system. The amplitudes of the analog waveform that are not digitized are output as noise. The higher the bit depth, the higher the dynamic range. The difference between very soft and very loud amplitudes. A 16-bit audio file has a theoretical dynamic range of 96 decibels. So an audio clip that has a 22 kHz sample rate and an 8-bit resolution is a monophonic file, and it would have one audio channel. Stereophonic would require a minimum of 16-bit resolution and two channels. Now that we've covered a little bit about sound, we need to understand how we can calculate the storage size based on the projects that we're working on. To calculate the storage requirements, you must multiply the sample rate by the resolution by the number of channels, and by the length in seconds. Again, that sample rate times the resolution times the channels times the length. So for a typical CD-ROM, where we have a 44,100 bit rate, we'd multiply that by 16 bits. So for a typical CD-ROM, where we have a 44.1 kilohertz, recording with 16-bit rate, we would multiply 44,100 by 2 bytes by 2 channels by 60 seconds, which would equal 10,584,000 bytes, or approximately 10 megabytes. And for a 22 kilohertz monophonic file with 8-bit resolution, We'd multiply 22,000 cycles per second by one byte by one channel by 60 seconds. Now, if you take out the seconds, we just see we have bytes left over. So we have 22,000 cycles times one byte times one channel times 60, or 1,320,000 bytes, or 1.26 megabytes. So a monophonic file is about one-eighth the size of a stereophonic file in this example. 
And as you can see, the more channels you add, the more space is needed. And the same is true for the resolution. A higher sample rate and a higher bit depth means more storage. And it's very important to accurately calculate how much space you will need for a project. The following table shows some file sizes for a one minute audio clip. A file with a sampling rate of 44,100 and a 16-bit resolution with two channels would be 10,584,000 bytes. The same file but with only one channel would be about half that size, 5,292,000 bytes. One with half that sampling rate and only one channel would again decrease in half by down to 2,646,000 bytes. And if we half it again, we'd decrease it to 1,323,000 bytes. And if we decrease the resolution in half to 8-bit instead of 16-bit, we would again half the file down to 616,000. So you can see the sampling rate, resolution, and number of channels can drastically change the file size. Okay, if a CD-ROM holds between 650 to 700 megabytes, depending on which type you choose, how many minutes of uncompressed CD audio quality can a 700 megabit disk store? Well, if we use our calculations that we discussed previously, we'd find out that it would hold about 69 minutes, but this is not quite correct because the disks say that they hold 80 minutes. So, how is this calculated differently? Well, a 700 megabyte disk has 3,600,000 ,000 blocks, and they're about 75 frames per second. This is called a block. So if we take 360,000 blocks and divide it by 75, we have 4,800 seconds. We can then divide that by 60, since there are 60 seconds in a minute, to get the 80 minute time frame, which in fact is correct. Now you would not be able to totally capitalize on that entire 80 minutes as some of it is lost to error correction and additional file information that is stored. When we convert or record a sound wave into a digital format, it is stored as a continuous waveform. A file format is simply a specified way of arranging a given type of information into bytes. And an audio file has two main parts, a header and the audio data. The header is used to store information about the file, including the resolution, sample rate, and type of compression, and also even the length of the file. The audio data piece is the audio, the sound wave, or the waveform. And often there may be a wrapper that's attached which could have license information or digital rights management or even streaming capabilities of that file. So the format of a digital audio file refers to the type of audio data within the file. And the file type refers to the structure of the data file. So it's common for the same format to be used by more than one file type. For example, the PCM format can be found both in the WAVE and AIFF files, which we'll discuss in a moment. So there are two different file extensions or types, but the format is the same. They're both PCM format. It is important to recognize that difference. Now for the file types for audio files. We can recognize these by the extension on the file. There is the Windows Audio Format, or WAVE, which is the default format for digital audio on Windows-based systems. WAVE files are usually coded in the PCM format, which means they are uncompressed and take up a good deal amount of space. There's also the Audio Interchange file format, which has the extension AIFF, or sometimes even AU. And this is the default audio format for the Macintosh-based systems. AU is the default format for Sun or Unix based systems. Both of these formats are supported on most other platforms and by most audio applications and again these are uncompressed but they can also be compressed 
which can create some compatibility problems. There's also the broadcast wave format or BWF, which is another uncompressed audio format 